Paul Lambert, Henrik Larsson and Ayel Berkovic were rested for the Midweek League Cup defeat of Air United. All three returned for this one. Reggie Blinker, Johan Mialbi and New Scotland hero Mark Birchill dropped out of the starting lineup. Olivier Tebili takes his place in central defence alongside Alan Stubbs having recovered from injury. Jackie McNamara is getting sharper all the time at right back and could force his way into Scotland's squad to play England. Already heading to Euro 2000 with Sweden is Henrik Larsson. His amazing strike rate with Celtic continues. Nine goals in ten games so far this season. Ricky Gillis has two goals to his credit so far, and that makes him Aberdeen's top scorer. Highly promising with St Mirren, Gillis hopes to develop further under Eva Skodal. There's only one change to the Aberdeen team which managed to beat First Division Falkirk only on penalties on Tuesday night. 19-year-old Derek Young is reintroduced to the team at the expense of Jim Hamilton. Here's how Aberdeen shape up. The central defensive pairing of Russell Anderson and Thomas Solberg has been probably the most impressive part of their team so far, despite the horrific goals against Colum. Ian Jess has passed a fitness test to support the attack. The referee for Celtic against Aberdeen is Stuart Dougal. Celtic kick off only their third home league match of the season. Most of their league games so far have been played away from here and very much aware that there's a six-point gap between themselves and Rangers have played a game more. Celtic have lost only three goals all season. Fantastic defensive record and scoring goals at will as well, but still playing catch-up against Rangers. Baravcic trying to open up the Aberdeen defence early on. And it's a defence which has been much opened up since August. Celtic began the rot for the Pitodri team with five goals at Pitodri in the opening weekend. Lovely touch. And it's Craig Burley with the first attempt on goal with just 60 seconds gone. And the impressive Anderson was quickly out here to sense danger and to cut down the scoring opportunity. Corner kick conceded though. In from Moravchik. Headed away by Meyer. Berkovic linking with Lambert. Intended for Burley. The pass cut out by Andy Dow and immediately given away to Berkovic. Moravchik is onside. Tried to turn that back to Craig Burley, but Aberdeen again failed to get it clear. Lambert, who's captain Scotland last weekend. Now the Norwegian reset. Aberdeen already hemmed in. Larsson and Viduka setting up. The shot for Alan Stubbs. Not far away. Stubbs claimed this was deflected behind. He was looking for a corner kick. No joy for him after he was set up by the strike pairing of first Larson, then Viduka. And Stubbs struck it well. Burley to McNamara. The challenge by Solberg. Lost though, and Larson must score. Off the uprights. What a chance that was. Another mistake in the Aberdeen defence. Jamie Buchan was the offender. And you'd have put your money on Henrik Larson scoring here. David Priest got just a touch. That diverted it wide. Andy Dow. Free kick given against Jackie McNamara. He reckons he got the ball. That's the message to Stuart Dougal. And he certainly got the ball, but he got Dow first. That's the judgment of the referee. Watchful on the goal line, Jonathan Gould. Flighted in and a good save. Russell Anderson's header with 13 minutes gone. A real chance to give Aberdeen the lead. I think he was surprised, Anderson, that he got the header and his head immediately were in his hands. Tabili missed it completely. Gould saved well. Alan 
and Stubbs urging Celtic forward. Larson hits a deck, free kick against Solberg. The tackle from behind. There's the possibility of a strike at goal here for Alan Stubbs. He fancies it. Good save by Priest. One-handed. A good save from Priest, who I think will feel that his wall let him down here. The shot deflected off the wall, which made the save even better. Superb from Tebili. All the composure in the world. Reset, good pass for Larson. A ricochet off Solberg. And a brave save by Priest. Berkovic for Lambert. Mark Viduka. And a chance for Ayo Berkovic, which he duly accepts. 16 minutes gone. And after much probing at the Aberdeen defence, comes the breakthrough. Viduka. Started it at the edge of the area, waited the moment, found Berkovic in room, and he showed great calmness in the penalty box, waited for Andy Dow to commit himself, went the other way and drove a shot where David Priest wasn't going to stop it. Change of direction from Lambert, deceived Andreas Meyer, lured into the foul. Good play from Vidar Reset. Mark Viduka. Solberg has lost it. It's Viduka. And finally, trundles behind for a corner kick. The chance lost by Viduka to make it two after Solberg had gone for the ball and missed it. Fries again did good work. Hasn't really settled into this game at all, Derek Young. That's well won. And Ian Jess, suddenly a chance for Aberdeen to equalise. It was down to the tenacity of Jimmy Buchan, who won the challenge. Ian Jess appeared to rush the shot, and it was well wide. Anderson got there before Larson. Not too many options for him, though, around about. Jonathan Gould has been a fairly lonely figure so far. Aberdeen not managing to do too much in front of him. And Larson bursting from the midfield. Still it's Larson. Good save by Pries. Pries denies Larson after a terrific burst into the penalty box. And the keeper timed his dive well. Home support, expecting another goal, but it's Aberdeen on the counter-attack with Winters. Derek Young, just wide. Maybe Skodal hangs his head, so does Derek Young. He would have wanted to have hit the target here after Celtic were sloppy in the midfield. It was a loose pass from Berkovic. Winters through for Young. And a shot which had Jonathan Gould flinging himself across goal.
Berkovic, the reverse pass for Henrik Larsson. Again, it's the uprights. He's working his way closer, inch by inch, to getting a goal, Larsson. After he again made a very intelligent run to get in the end of the pass from Berkovic. This could be a worry for Celtic. Ayol Berkovic feels the need to come off. Obviously feeling an injury. And with important European matches coming up. A worried look. On the faces of the Celtic management team, Reggie Blinker comes on as... Berkovic's replacement. Solberg beat the Duca. Ball runs from Moravchik. Through for Craig Burley. And for Henrik Larsson! That's a brilliant goal! And that's Henrik Larsson's 50th league goal for Celtic. It's number 10 for the season. And number 2 for Celtic on the afternoon. This was superb stuff. The flip from Moravchik, lovely ball in from Burley, and he wasn't taking too long to weigh this up, Larson. He just whipped it away from David Priest, and Celtic two up four minutes from half time. Left by both Anderson and Dow, Larson for Moravchik, saved by Priest. And again, brilliant goalkeeping. And that spares the blushes of two of his defenders who got in a real fankel here. And Viduka and Larson set up Moravchik. Good stop there, and even better the second time. Laid off by Larson, through from Blinker, the back heel from Viduka, cut out by Solberg, danger's not over, and it's Henrik Larson! That's two in two minutes from Larson, and Celtic 3 0 up. No respite for the Aberdeen defence. Lovely ball in this time from Moravchik, and again the deftest of touches from Larson. There wasn't power in that, but there was direction, and Priest was beaten again. Given away by Tabili. Derek Young's pass short of Winters. Does well to win it back though. In for Jess and Winters! And Winters knows he had to put this on target. Laid back to him by Ian Jess. And that could have given Aberdeen the mild consolation of a goal back before half time. That's half time, Celtic irresistible. Three goals up, and Aberdeen star player has been goalkeeper David Priest. That tells you how much pressure they've been under. Priest denied them time and time again, but finally, Henrik Larsson added to the opening goal from Ayol Berkovic. This was the first one. It was the worrying sight for Celtic of Berkovic having to go off shortly after this, seemingly injured. 
But that was only after he'd given Celtic the lead with 16 minutes gone, set up by Mark Viduka, his fifth goal for his new club. That was a flashing effort from Henrik Larsson, set up by Craig Burley, which made it 2-0. And quickly it was 3, Moravchuk the creator this time. Again, Larsson the finisher, half-time at Celtic Park, Celtic 3, Aberdeen 0. The sorry story continues for Aberdeen in eight and a half Premier games. They've lost a grand total of 25 goals. They've scored only three. And their miserable form shows little sign of getting much better. pass judged perfectly for McNamara Larson in for Viduka Viduka hold to the ground no penalty that certainly merits another look the arms of Anderson were round Viduka's neck as he tried to hold him off and that looked a decent penalty claim against Russell Anderson. Reggie Blinker making himself available. Now it's Viduka. Deceptively good touch on the ball for a big man, Viduka. Blinker against Penny. Quickly taken to Moravchik. And a mistake by Robbie Winters presents Mark Viduka with Celtic's fourth. It gets worse for Aberdeen. It gets better for Celtic. 60 minutes gone in the second half. A soft corner conceded. And following it, a soft goal. What was Winters doing? And Mark Viduka wasn't hanging about to ask any questions about it. He just wheeled, turned the ball away from Priest, And it's 4-0. Moravchik, delicate little ball in for Vidar Reset. Turned away by Mark Perry. Another corner kick. Taken quickly by Moravchuk to Blinker. Back for Paul Lambert. Fierce strike. But it soared over the crossbar. Paul Lambert sensing the opportunity here. To have a crack at making it five, not quite. Moravchik, Marson, it's Viduka, saved by Priest, but Viduka will score at the second attempt. And it's almost like a rerun of Kutogri from the opening weekend of the season. Kenny Dalgleish joins in the applause alongside Chief Executive Alan McDonald. Two for Viduka, two for Larson. Five for Celtic. Big holes appearing now in the Aberdeen defence. Reese again, so unlucky in that he stopped the first attempt from Viduka. But there was little he could do when the ball fell back to the feet of the Australian striker. Jimmy Buckham does well. Bets to McAllister. That's for Jim Hamilton. Moravchik for reset. Mark Perry wins it.
Andreas Meyer. Jimmy McAllister. Well wide. Well, it's a rare thing to see an Aberdeen shot at goal, even if, as with this one, it's nowhere near the target. Big questions will again be asked of the Aberdeen chairman, Stuart Mill, sitting alongside his predecessor, Ian Donald. And the call from the Aberdeen supporters will be to spend money and get quality players in. It's been a suffering season so far for these Aberdeen supporters. And at the moment, no great signs that it's going to get any better. for Viduka Lambert to McNamara supplying the width but not the cross corner kick off the head of Mark Perry the Manavchik corner and Larson has a hat-trick Another glorious afternoon for Henrik Larsson. His 12th goal of the season. And Celtic's sixth for the afternoon. Andreas Meyer did his best on the goal line. But there was no way that he could keep it out. Nobody really for Aberdeen jumping against Larsson. And the header over the line. 31 minutes gone in the second half. Larson makes it six. Hamilton stretched out to prod that towards Buchan. Not quite sure even if Jamie Buchan knew where he was heading there. Down by Moravchik for Lambert. The Slovakia Moravchik gets it back. Will be so important to Celtic in the forthcoming UEFA Cup ties. And doing not a bad job here. And almost scoring with his first touch, Virgil. Finding a bit of room at the near post for the Moravchik cross. Uh, not far away, and if this had been a bit lower, David Priest wouldn't have known too much about it. David Priest getting some attention, and having seen six goals fly past him, it's not surprising. Melby on the header against Hamilton. Through from Lambert to Blinker. Still has it. That's for Viduka. Burchill alongside, but it's Mark Viduka. And that's the magnificent seven. Three for Viduka. Three for Larson. And Celtic inflict yet more punishment on Aberdeen. Scoring almost at will now, Celtic. Into the box from Blinker. Viduka turned Solberg with so much ease here. And then the only job to be done was to pick his spot away from Priest. That he did with some aplomb. 7-0 inside the last minute of the match. Inside the 
second minute of stoppage time. And at this stage, Aberdeen really want to put out of their misery. It's hard to believe at this stage that Aberdeen were only one down with four minutes left in the first half. Duka back to Lambert. Now reset. That's full time, and John Barnes celebrates seven goals that were certainly magnificent for Celtic. Three of them for Mark Duka, three for Henrik Larsson, and the first one scored by Ayal Berkovic before he was taken off, seemingly injured. David Priest, if he looks dazed, certainly should be. And let's hope he's OK, but what a miserable afternoon he's had. And Aberdeen's miserable season continues. In nine games, they've conceded 29 goals. Celtic played a lot of slick stuff. They looked a top-quality team, but this was no contest. Aberdeen were outclassed. And all they can manage is one point from nine games so far. An important win, though, for Celtic as they keep up their pursuit of Rangers at the top of the league. Final score at Celtic Park. Celtic 7, Aberdeen 0. You passed the 50 league goals for Celtic, Mark, this afternoon. Are milestones like that important to you? I didn't know. I didn't know it was my, I passed it today, but it's always nice. But most important thing is the team is uh, performing good and uh, playing uh, good football. And you're a couple of points closer to Rangers now? Yeah, that's always a bonus, of course. Uh, you don't really expect that, but uh, when it happens, uh, it's always nice. I think we were just too good for him today, you know. Um, who knows why, <laughs> but I think that we gelled together very well today and I thought we played some excellent football. Uh, we've been practicing a lot of one-touch stuff at training and, uh, and it's been paying off. We was taught a lesson in, in football today and with a team who was better in, in every position. You were quick, quick, out, outclassed? Uh, yeah, I have to admit that today we were. What do you do? What do you do now? At the moment, uh, it's trying to get some confidence into the players we have, but uh, on, on the long term, uh, we are trying to, to move new players in to, to strengthen the team. And, uh, and uh, I think we, we will succeed with that. So the attacking play, particularly in the first half, although we only scored three in the first half, was exceptional. Exceptional, and particularly in the first 15 minutes. When I think we hit the post three times and created so many chances, uh, and we didn't score, and then they came down, had a, a free kick, and nearly scored for me. So I thought it was going to be one of those days, but fortunately, we, we, we scored at the end. Is Stuart Milne being supportive it's enough to you up, in terms of giving you the money you want to spend? Yes, yeah, I think so. Sure. Yeah, I, I, in the wrong hands. So that that's not the problem. No, nope. uh, it certainly is. But but you can always say the problem if if there is a difference. If you got. If you had 100 million pounds, then it wouldn't be a problem, but we don't. So uh, we have to uh, to uh, to work very hard to find the right players uh, to the right price as well, and I think that's okay. That that that's what I was told before I signed the, the contract. So I'm not complaining. 